For code step by step big O one, we're asked to solve um, big O notation for a couple different examples. So we're gonna look at these and find the answers. For A, we have a statement right here that's gonna execute once. We have a statement right here that's also going to execute once. We're not gonna look at these since they don't really contribute to the overall runtime of the code since we have four loops inside of here that are gonna take up much more time to run. In our four loops, we can compare these two and see which one's bigger. And after we find out which one's bigger, we can look at that from there. We're gonna use blue and green to distinguish these two. So first, we can see that these two aren't related to each other. In here, our first for loop, we're seeing that two is being added to n every single time this for loop runs. For our next one, we're seeing that two is being multiplied to n every time this for loop runs. So that means that this for loop is greater. We're gonna look at this one. And it's going to run big O, and since it's two times n, we're gonna say two n. However, we're told not to write the exact calculation of the runtime. This would be writing it as an exact calculation. If we're, write, if we're supposed to write it in a more general solution, this two would get absorbed into the n, and we would get big O n as our final answer. For part b, we can look at these statements as executing once, and we have a for loop in here. Every time this for loop runs, this is gonna execute once, this is gonna execute once, and this is gonna execute once. So we can look at our inner for loop. And in our for loop, we get that n minus five. In whatever code this is written in, we can just say that n is equal to 60. We'll write n is equal to 60. If we look at our inner for loop, it's getting smaller and our n value is getting smaller and smaller each time we run it. And j right here is being added to two every single time. And this is true also for our outside for loop. However, it's our i in value is not being incremented as often as our j value is. It's, it's, it's incrementing slower than our j value is incrementing. What this means is that because both of our ends are decreasing, we could say that both of these ends are being divided by two. And this is a constant. This doesn't terribly change our on. However, if o, if our n is being divided by two, that changes it significantly enough where our answer has to include the division by two part. So it's o n divided by two. For part c, we're given these that are run once, so they're not gonna affect our overall code, so we can't even, we don't even need to look at them. In our for loop, we see that the runtime of these loops are all dependent on i, and i is in this main for loop right here. Once we know that all of our i values depend on this part right here, and our i values are capped at 1 million, which is a constant number, we can say that all of this is simply big O1. That's because it's a constant time algorithm. And basically, this can't grow. This is a fixed size at 1 million. It will never grow past 1 million. And that is why it is just O1. More specifically, it would be O1 million. But we're not asked for specifics. We're asked for it to be general. So that means this is our answer. For part D, we have an array list and we are adding values into it. So this is going to get executed once for every run that's in here. That means that this is gonna be executed n many times and our outer for loop is going to be executed n squared because we have a n times n right here, which is gonna equal n squared times our inside n. So that means we have n cubed right here. For our other for loop down here, we can see that we are having this statement execute once for every loop 
that's in here and this is gonna run this is also a statement and uh, so is this but this is gonna run for n times 2 so this is gonna be 2n which is equivalent to n this means that this is going to be big O n however this is bigger so we're really only focused on that we don't need to look at this and we can see that our answer is just going to be O n cubed because we only look at the biggest run we only look at the longest runtime for part e we have two for loops we have this which is a constant this is also a constant and this is also a constant so we're not going to be looking at those we're only going to be focusing on this for loop and this for loop right here so if we look at our first for loop we're going to see that this iterates n times with one statement inside of here that's just adding values at index i into set so this is just going to happen n times or o n times for the second one we can see that it's bigger so that's most likely that what's going to be our answer so we have two statements in here this one it is happening n times because this statement is going to run as many times as there is n that's why it's n because i is equal to n so i has to be the same amount of n for this loop to break at least for this part if we look at our second part this is the important part it's the only difference between this statement and the statement in the first for loop in here we're adding i to our n value so we are slowly increasing these over time let's say that our n value for this let's just say that it's the value of 8 right well for this we are going to be adding 1 plus 1 in our first for loop and the next time we're going to be adding 2 plus 2 and then next time is 3 plus 3 and so on and so forth by doing this this is slowly increasing logarithmically so this has to be log of n and we can see that if we have a calculator here we can plot a log of x and see that it's slowly increasing over time just kind of like how these would be slowly increasing over time together from 1 plus 1 to 2 plus 2 3 plus 3 and so on and so forth since these two happen in the same loop they have to be put together so when assembling this we're going to write this as n log n and this is equivalent to big o n log n and that is going to be the final answer